Hello. Have you ever wondered how much energy does Starlink consume? I did, since I have been living in this lovely house in the middle of nowhere where I don't have any connection to the electric system and all the energy that I can count on comes from my own production from solar panels. I became very conscious about how much energy consume all the devices and appliances that I use in the house. So I decided to measure how much energy Starlink consume. I am going to measure its consumption during 12 hours during the daytime. And I'm going to see how much does it consume when booting up, when searching for the satellite, how much does it consume when you use it a lot or when you don't use it a lot, because people say that there is a difference, so I want to see that. And also I would like to see if the weather impacts the power consumption. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at its power consumption during 12 hours. For this, I have super cool tool that I'm going to be using. This is a smart breaker that I bought for my electricity box. But before putting it in electricity box, I decided that I can play around and I connected input on one side of it and output on another side. So this way I can connect any appliance in my house to this beautiful thing and see real time how much energy does it consume. Also, it has a app where I can see the history of consum consumption during the time period. So, tomorrow in the morning I'm going to wake up and plug in Sterling into this beautiful thing and start it up. And I want to see how much energy does it consume during booting up process and then I will leave it like this during 12 hours and I'll see how much energy it would be consuming during the 12 hour time period. All right, it's early morning. I have just woke up and I'm going to turn on this Starlink in this beautiful device and see how much it consumes while booting up. Let's see, I haven't changed the location of the dish, of course. It's mounted on my roof and it's not going to move anywhere during this day. And I haven't changed the location of router or any settings or anything. I just switched it off yesterday and switch it on today. One moment there was 59. Wow. 97. It's holding 73 for quite a while now. Well, it's been around a minute right now. So I left it for seven more minutes. Five minutes later, it got to 42, 43 watts per hour and kept going like this since then. Well, what we have? In the beginning, during the first 10 minutes, it was consuming 70 with spikes to 90. And then it moved to the steady 43 watts per hour. Hi everyone, I just came back from my gym and I'm going to start working for today. Normally in my work I don't use a lot of bandwidth and don't load much the router. I don't use a lot of internet. But later I will be uploading a video to YouTube and download videos from Google Photos. And for that I would use a lot of bandwidth. And let's see if that heavy load would impact the consumption of Starlink in any way. This is going to be in the evening. By the way, my Starlink is a residential version, which means it is for the home usage, not for boats and for vans. I believe this is generation 2, where I checked the official Starlink website to see what it states there, how much Starlink consumes. 
and it's saying here in average 50 to 75 watts and in idle 20 watts but what is idle idle doesn't mean that time when you are not using internet for example when it's on but you are not doing anything this is not idle idle is the sleeping schedule so link has a sleep feature that you can turn on to disconnect it from internet for night for example i was doing it before here you can put when it will turn off and later when it will switch on in the in the morning I was doing it before not to save energy because I wasn't thinking about this during summertime. It wasn't the issue. So I was doing this for wellness purposes so that it switches off at 11 p.m. And I don't use internet up to 11 p.m. I was doing it for this. So during this time, this is the idle time that puts here 20 watts. And all the time that it's not in sleeping mode it's kind of active time they are also saying that the consumption might depend on weather when it's raining it might consume more uh, this morning it was sunny then it became cloudy and i believe that in an hour or so it will start light rain we'll see and also it consumes more when it snows starlink has this feature to melt the snow that got on top of starlink to clear itself to be able to receive the signal in a better way i haven't tested it because i don't have snow here what is said on the website that during this operation logically it consumes more and this is actually a recommendation for the off-grid houses like mine to turn it off for the night to preserve electricity but i find it more efficient not to use this feature sleep mode but to turn it off completely and let's see how much i'm saving doing this so we'll see in the end of the day how much it will be consuming during 12 hours i will discover how much i am saving during the night when I'm turning it off for the night, how much energy I'm able to save in this way. All right, I'll get to my work and I'll see you in a few hours. All right, el momento de gran emoción. Let's see what the app says after 12 hours. So this evening it was raining a little bit and last two hours I was uh, downloading, uploading a lot of stuff. Let's see if there is a any difference. Well, during 12 hours it shows that Sterling consistently consumed 42, 44 watts every hour honestly i'm quite surprised i don't see that weather impacted in any way the power consumption and i don't see that the actual usage impacted it in any way hmm there were no real fluctuations during the day well another thing it's calculating the average for the hour so during the hour there could have been some fluctuations for example one moment it's 40 watts or 35 watts and another moment it's 50 watts but in the end during the hour the numbers are such yeah there are no real fluctuations throughout the day also i am pleasantly surprised it's less than 50 70 watts that was stated on the official website by the way my channel has membership option now and if you would like to support new videos on this channel, I suggest you to become a member and to support my channel. Members can see videos that no one else can see, like shorts with real life updates. And also they can see my new videos earlier than others. I respond to their comments first and then they have this lovely picture in comments showing that they are supporting my channel. So if you would like to support my channel as well, Check out the join button below this video. The membership starts from one dollar. Thanks. Cheers. Back in my old life while living in my apartment in Kiev, I wouldn't probably even think about this. But now, living here in the middle of nowhere, I have to consider how much electricity every single thing consumes and if I can afford it electricity-wise. What does 44 watts per hour mean really? Let's compare it to some common 
household devices. And to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges, we cannot compare this to microwave, for example, that consumes one kilowatt per hour, but you only use this microwave for one minute, 30 seconds, uh, two minutes. This is not correct. We have to compare it to something that works during an entire day, for example, to water pump or to the fridge or the laptop. This is very similar to what my computer Asus ZenBook consumes per hour. It consumes about 30-35 watts per hour. Then my fridge has fluctuations as well, but in the end, during the day, it consumes around 600 watts. Then the water pump that I have during the day consumes around 350 watts. So in the end, 44 watts for Starlink brings us to, if we multiply to 24, it brings us to 1 kilowatt per day. Well, it doesn't seem awful to me. What do you think? And especially that I'm switching it off for night and it's minimum 11 hours. For at least for 11 hours, I am saving half of the kilowatt by switching it off. I think this is not bad at all. And I'm really surprised it's less than stated on the website. Do you think this power consumption is reasonable? I know a lot of people use it for their grid houses like mine. But after knowing this, do you still think it's a good idea? I think the consumption is reasonable. What I'm going to do next? With this beautiful tool that I have, I'm going to measure all the appliances that I have in my house. Fridge, microwave, air fryer, electric heater, oven. I'm going to measure how much energy they consume and how much energy I can save if I adjust the way I'm using them. I'm very excited to do this experiment and with this new toy I will be able to do it. But this is another story for another time. And while I'm working on this video, watch another video that I made about the toilet, the simplest version of the toilet ever that works without water and sewerage. It should be on the screen right now. Cheers. Bye.